But if you've only ever studied Muay Thai, I'm sorry, dude, like a high school wrestler will probably take you down before you get a really good hit on them. The art of fighting without fighting? Show me some of it. Hi there everybody, Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the advantages of a grappling system over a purely striking system like Muay Thai or kickboxing when it comes to self-defense. Of course, if you are new to this channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button, click that little thumbs up button and hit the little bell so you can get notified anytime I make a new video. And if you live too far from Indianapolis to train with me in person, we now have our entire first rank online available to train at home with a friend. You can find this at Kempo360.com where I go over the essential techniques for self-defense. That's at Kempo360.com. By far the most watched video on my channel is one that I made a, a while back where I ranked you know, all the different martial arts from like, you know, S tier to F tier on like how effective they would be for self-defense if you studied them completely by themselves. And effectively, like the mixed martial arts ended up on top and then the grappling arts and then a lot of the striking arts kind of were in the middle and then, um, you know, things like the more esoteric arts end up, you know, on the bottom. One of the viewers pointed out, they said, I don't really understand why the grappling arts are more on top than the striking arts are, or why are grappling arts better than striking arts when it comes to self-defense? And honestly, I think that person probably didn't watch the whole video because it's a pretty long video. And I feel like I go into a lot of detail about why I was putting an art where I would put it, but I thought I'd make a video that specifically addressed that question, that very specifically says, why is it a grappling art is a little bit better for self-defense than something like just karate or uh, kickboxing or Muay Thai? I will gladly tell you that the greatest asset of stand fighting arts is its ability to stay out of punching range and maneuver around an opponent. But that's also kind of one of the biggest weaknesses of striking arts. That when it comes to staying safe, the area where my punch is going to hurt you is at the end of the punch. It's over here. It's not really here. If your head's here, these shots aren't gonna be nearly as powerful as the ones at the tail end of my punch. And so because of this fact, when it comes to self-defense, we have a basic rule. We wanna be all the way out, so that's like back in kicking range or even further, or all the way in, as close as we can get. Preferably behind the guy. If you only study a striking art, and that's the only art you know, then you have a real serious problem when it comes to not getting hit. Is that for all of your tools to work, you have to be in punching range, which means they can punch you. The benefit of a grappling art really just comes down to control. That if I can control my opponent, then I have a greater chance of mitigating the damage. As we know in boxing or kickboxing or Muay Thai, anyone who studied their art for any length of time knows about what we call the puncher's chance. That even very skilled strikers sometimes get knocked out just because they got the right punch when they weren't looking. At the end of the day, if you have to be in punching range to use your martial art, you are standing in the exact range that you get knocked out. You have very little control over your opponent. If I can get close enough to you to get control of your body and establish a takedown and put you in a controlling position like a side control or top mount, you basically can't hurt me anymore. And that, that is why the grappling arts get that little edge on that chart. It's all about that control. But that doesn't mean that the grappling arts are flawless. I think a grappler who's never studied striking is also being stupid. That's the reason why our curriculum at my school, Kempo 360, includes stand, clinch, ground, and weapons training. Because in order to defend yourself, you can't be a specialist. You may be a black belt in a striking art, and then the person takes you to the ground and boom, you're now a white belt. 
You may be a black belt in a grappling art and then somebody has the footwork to prevent the takedown and now you're a white belt because you don't know how to strike. It's not good enough just to study one art except for the arts that are inherently mixed martial arts. Those are arts like Jeet Kune Do and Kenpo 360 that teach the whole breadth of knowledge. And of course, mixed martial arts schools as a whole try their best, even though they're more sports oriented, teach stand, clinch, and ground. So yeah, it may hurt your feelings to know that your Muay Thai probably wouldn't beat a wrestler, but all you have to do is look at the first, I don't know, five years of UFC. If you watch the, uh, the original UFCs, that was when you had someone who studied one art, fighting someone who studied one art. And basically what happened was that the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys came in and just would dump all of the strikers on their ass. And then the, the strikers wouldn't know what the hell to do. And then the strikers started getting kind of wise to the BJJ and then came the reign of the wrestlers because the wrestlers had the takedown game and the athleticism and the grit. And sure, Wrestlers eventually got dethroned, but what wrestlers got dethroned by was mixed martial arts, by someone who knew enough wrestling to stop the wrestling, but then also understood the striking. In the video where I'm doing the top 10 list, I'm really just thinking about the arts just purely by themselves, as if like, like in a vacuum, like you've only ever studied Muay Thai. If you studied Muay Thai and then did like three years of wrestling, yeah, you probably have a pretty good self-defense art just in and of itself. But if you've only ever studied Muay Thai, I'm sorry, dude, like a high school wrestler will probably take you down before you get a really good hit on them. But of course, you always have that puncher's chance. So, you know, you got that going for you. The whole point of this channel has always been to promote the philosophy of not specializing. It has always been about saying that at the end of the day, the guy who knows stand, clinch, and ground, even if he's not like a master at it, has a distinct advantage over the guy who only knows one. Because you may be a black belt at karate, and I may be a blue belt at stand, clinch, and ground, but you're a white belt at, at, at the other two. So you're a black belt at stand, but you're a white belt at clinch, and a white belt at ground. So I don't need to be a black belt in karate, I just need to be good enough at karate to get you to the ground. And statistically, at least as far as like America is concerned, Americans tend to be more striking oriented in our fights. So in conclusion, if you only studied one martial art and you had to choose between a striking art or a grappling art, grappling arts will offer you more control over your opponent. But to study just one martial art and call it self-defense is stupid. And that's really what the point of that whole tier list was in the first place, was to kind of talk about how all of these arts have giant gaping holes in them, and that the practitioners of the art oftentimes have an almost religious devotion to that art, and they don't really see the gaping holes in their art. A Muay Thai guy is gonna be good at kicks and punches and elbows and knees. They aren't really gonna understand takedowns as good as a judo guy or a wrestler. And a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu practitioner is gonna be really, really good at tying your ass up and making you tap out, uh, but their punch defense isn't gonna be that great. Taekwondo guys have outstanding kicks, but they tend to leave their head exposed. There really isn't one best art. The best art is, <laughs> what, what we all should know by now, is mixing them. Having a good stand art, a good clinch art, a good ground art, and a good weapons art. If you're interested in studying self-defense and you don't want to pigeonhole yourself to just one very specific strategy, that's what Kenpo 360 was made for in the first place. Kenpo 360 combines the best of the art of Kenpo, of Jeet Kune Do, of Judo, of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and hyper focuses it on the art of self-defense very specifically. We don't give a damn about winning tournaments. We don't give a damn about, about winning uh, any kind of like kata competitions, even though we may compete in them. Our art is primarily focused on self-defense, but not pigeonholing ourselves to just one strategy. If you're interested in learning Kempo 360 and you live in the Indianapolis area, you can come train with me here at the School of Self-Defense. But if you live too far away to train with me in person, we now have our entire 
first rank available to study online at kenpo360.com. We cover standing defense, clinch techniques, and ground techniques. You even get a couple of good throws all in this outstanding 22 lesson package at kenpo360.com. Now, of course, the point of this video is to encourage you to not have blinders on and say, uh, you know, Michael said grappling's better, so I should only study grappling. The point of this video is, is to emphasize the point that mixing your arts is important. So if you have made it to the end of this video and you would like to leave a comment letting me know you made it to the end of the video, include the phrase, mix it up, somewhere in your uh, comment to me and you and I will know you made it to the end. And of course, if you've made it to the end of the video and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? You're clearly enjoying yourself. You've probably been binging my videos. And <laughs> just go ahead and click that subscribe button, click the thumbs up button and hit the little bell so you can get notified next time I make a new video. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.